Welcome back everyone to my new account playthrough on Gems of War. This is episode 25 and we are going to do the quest lines for Zijin and Golfania and uh, hopefully I can get through both of those in this one episode. Uh, first of all we're going to go and open up some keys because I really uh, do hope I can get a better legendary. Well not really a better one. I got a few good ones. Uh, we've been really lucky so far but I do want a legendary troop or even a mythic that will uh, not mana block my bronze lock pistol. Because I really, now that I got Cedric, uh, you know, I, I just got to use Cedric with bronze lock pistol because it's a really great combination. So uh, I don't know. I don't even have that many keys saved up on this new account. So we're going to have to get really lucky. It is Pan's Veil uh, Kingdom, so we could get the Wild Queen. That would be a good mythic to get, uh, but we'll see. Um, let's go ahead and just open our glory keys first here and see what we get. And we got Sir Quentin Hadley. Uh, this troop is a pretty good troop, actually. It will convert purple gems to yellow, green gems to skulls. Uh, it will deal 7 damage to two random enemies. Um, pretty standard cost for these uh, uh, Skull Transform Legendary cards, 18 mana cost. Um, it does, if you fully trade it, it will allow all knights to start with 50% mana, which is pretty good. And since it's a knight itself, that means that that 18 is going to get cut in half. Uh, so that's really nice. Now, I don't know if I'll use this though, um, but we'll see. Maybe. Uh, it is a good legendary card though, so that's nice. We can add that to our uh, arsenal. And now let's just open up some gem keys here, and then we'll go and open up those event keys and try to get the Wild Queen. We got Ted 1000, which uh, <laughs> is is not really that impressive at all. So yeah, gem keys did not pay off uh, as well as the glory keys, uh, surprisingly. All right, so are we going to get lucky here and actually get the Wild Queen? Uh, I think I'm going to open in batches of 10, simply because if we do get it right away, uh, then I can save the rest for a different troop that I want to get. So we'll go ahead and just open these. Uh, nope, we did not get it. Open another 10. Oh, my odds are pretty low, but if a mythic is going to drop in these uh, event key openings this week, it will be the Wild Queen. I have 14 left. Let's see if we can get lucky here. And no. Oh, well. We tried. We tried. Gold keys I'm not even going to open because it's not even worth it. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Just a quick recap, I know it's been uh, maybe a month or so since I've done an episode, and I do apologize for uh, that simply because life has been pretty busy for me this past month, uh, and haven't had a whole lot of time until now to jump back in for another episode, because these episodes do take me somewhere around like an hour to go through these. We're going to start with Zygen and just work our way through here. And yeah, I, I'll just keep the same team here. Uh, Behemoth seems to be pretty good for uh, damaging, doing damage to all enemies. However, let's just take it real quick here because it's been a while since I've been in here on this account. I want to see what I all have. Okay, Divinia, but no damage on that. Gorgotha, no damage. Um, that's right. We did have Kirsten Axe too. That's a good one, but... There's going to be mana blocking both of those colors if I put it in there. That's that's what I was really hoping for is to get a legendary uh, card. That <laughs> it wasn't going to get mana blocked. So, uh, excuse me. Um, we could try Sir Quentin Hadley and see uh, how this guy does. We got enough souls to level them up to level 19, so we'll go ahead and do that. As far as unlocking this, I do not have enough trait stones, but I do have enough orbs. I don't 
don't know if I want to do that. So all it's going to do here for me is really make it start with 50% mana. I don't really think that's worth going in all on that. But uh, I was going to equip it, and then I forgot. And I was like, oh. Let's try that for a little bit. And if it's uh, too slow, then we'll switch it back to the behemoth. But, yeah, this is... Uh, This combination, though, with Cedric and the Bronze Lock Pistol is a really nice combination. I still don't have enough uh, Legendary Ingots. I just opened up the Underworld in the last episode. Uh, so, that's another thing. I, I haven't done anything on this account since that last episode. So, yeah, uh, it's been a while. Uh, now we do have uh, Hadley here. That was some nice uh, skull damage. And uh, it might take me a little bit longer to get through these quests because um, the life and armor is a little higher on these troops. Just wish I had a... Uh, Legendary troop or a mythic or something like that like if I had Infernus with this team or Aquaticus or Obsidious anything like that would uh, I Would be doing a lot more damage Oh, yeah, well hmm so, I'm trying to, <laughs> since it's been so long, I'm trying to remember everything uh, that was going on. I did unlock the Underworld, like I was just talking about, and uh, my goal with that was to uh, get some troops down in there, um, especially troops like Queen, Beatrix, and Gobtroffle. If I did uh, get those, one of those at least. You know, but we need portal shards, so I haven't been doing enough underworld battles to get enough portal shards, unfortunately. So I can't really open up too much of those yet. Uh, otherwise, if I got Gobtroffle, I would go ahead and put him in this build immediately. Uh, or Queen Beatrix. Either one of those would work really good with this team setup. There would be a little bit of mana blocking on those, but they would also generate mana. Uh, because both of those troops do create uh, gems. Yeah, I mean, this is working okay. Sir Quentin Hadley is uh, working okay so far. It's a little bit weird, but um, the reason I say it's a little bit weird is because it creates a lot of skulls, and I don't really have a way to maximize skull damage other than uh, the Bronze Lock Pistol is destroying gems on the board, and it will destroy those skulls and do a little extra damage to a troop because of that. Other than that, we really don't have any uh, great centered, anything really synergizing here with Quentin Hadley. Ow. So, yeah. But yeah, that was the goal. Um, I actually don't know how far I want to go with this new account playthrough. I was planning on going to, like, level 300 or so, but um, I may not go that far with this account. You know, it's kind of 
it is kind of difficult to play two accounts of Gems of War at the same time, considering uh, this is a game that requires quite a bit of uh, daily or at least, at the very least, weekly activity to like really get anywhere in this game. So, I might finish just all the quest lines and uh, try to get one good troop from the underworld, and then I might... Uh, end this new account playthrough and then just focus on my uh, main account and then maybe um, start recording a different game um, a game I've been thinking about recently because it went on sale on Steam um, recently for pretty inexpensive and I picked it up was uh, uh, Might and Magic what was it? Clash of, uh, I forget the title of it, but it's like this very unique, um, type of battle system where it's kind of like a three match where you have these troops and you got to position the troops and kind of like these three match setups in order for the troops to do damage. And there's like a story that goes along with it. So I've seen a couple of other guys play it, uh, it's an older game. I think it was first released for uh, the DS. So, but I've been thinking about that because I picked it up recently. And uh, so once I'm done with this new account playthrough here, I might go over and do a playthrough on that. I mean, it's not that I, uh, <laughs> it's not that I haven't, en haven't enjoyed the, uh, the new account playthrough. There's definitely some really great moments on this new account playthrough. Like, uh, I've gotten some really great luck opening, uh, keys that, uh, the vault key where I was opening Cedric. That <laughs> was some amazing luck. So, it's been, uh, pretty fun. I like it when they uh, when, when the gems connect and then you get a couple of skulls that match. That's nice. But yeah, if you're starting out in Gems of War, um, you know it's a game you can pick up and play whenever you want. Uh, no commitments. It's free to play, so you don't have to spend you do not have to spend any money to get ahead although uh there are uh things that you can spend money on that do make the game uh easier you can get death knight armor which will give you more gold souls and experience uh, and all that does make the game easier so there are you don't have to but there are things that you can spend money on in this game to make things easier and uh, the more that you do play it for free the more that you can justify in your mind of uh, spending money on it so um, you got to be careful about that um, but the other thing I've been thinking about and I know some of the other youtubers have as well um, I remember watching a video recently about uh, Cine Cool was talking about uh, how long he thinks the game might last. Um, I know there's a new update coming to the game, 5.0, and I've heard some rumors about some things. Apparently there's going to be something like an elite pass that people have to pay real money for, uh, some kind of new campaign thing. So I don't know about that yet. I really haven't looked into uh, any of the dev streams on it. So I'm not completely in the loop, but I've heard some things from some of just the forums and um, from like Cine Cool's channel because I know he checks out uh, some of that information. But 
Um, I remember watching one of his videos and he was talking about how long he uh, thinks the game might last. And, you know, I, I believe we had a conversation about it at one time too uh, in the comments section. And I don't know. It's, you know, we have a new generation of consoles coming out and that's one thing that might uh, affect the game. But at this point, you know, I think the most of the people that play this game are probably on mobile, even though um, I think the console uh, player base is, is pretty big. And when I say pretty big for a game like this, I'm thinking probably, you know, in the, ten, in, in the thousands at least, uh, but it could be, you know, tens of thousands or more because not everybody that plays this game plays it, you know, daily. They might just do a little bit here or there a week or two and then come back to it when they get uh, bored of playing other games. So uh, how many people have actually spent real money on it? That I don't know. But certainly uh, the it's much easier probably to spend money on this game if you're a mobile player just because, you know, you're right there on your phone and you probably have your credit card or something hooked up to your Google account. So you just go, you know, and your transactions can go pretty pretty smooth with a single click uh, in those apps sometimes. So, um, you know, and this, this is like one of those games, too, on the mobile, which I can actually stomach for the most part. Uh, I have tried playing some other mobile games, and most of them are just, I don't know, they really, really annoy me. Most of them are all pay to win. Um, you know, games are supposed to be fun, uh, and then you make money on them because people are enjoying <laughs> playing your game, and it seems like, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't even, uh, talk about my opinions on mobile gaming, but, um, one of the only reasons why I like this game so far, and I've played it now for, I don't know, two years at least, uh, is that it, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like you have to pay money to play it and uh, but you know there are there's over the last year there's been a lot of changes to the game that were it's starting to feel a little bit like me where they're they're pushing players kind of in a direction where there's so much to do in the game now and there's so much to do every day to like feel like you've got to keep up and sure, you can play this game solo. Okay, you can, but you're not gonna you're not gonna get very far. It's gonna get frustrating at some point. You won't have enough keys, resources. So then you got to get into a guild, and then you got to get into an active guild because if you're not, yeah, you're barely going to get anything. And then if you are not active, you might get kicked from the guild. Um, so it really does kind of. Uh, if you want to be one of the top players, get all the troops, collect them all, all that kind of stuff, it really does feel like uh, you know you're you're forced into playing uh, this game with a very active group and doing it daily. And then you start justifying in your mind, well, since I've been so active and I have uh, uh, you know friends in a guild, and you know you guys are all active and. Uh, you've put, you know, I don't think I've missed a single day logging into Gems of War in the last two years on my main account. So that's what I'm talking about is it, it gets to the point where I'm pretty sure that the devs that design the game can see the activity of how many people are logging in every day. And that right there is... Uh, probably the information that they're tracking and they want to capitalize on that. I mean, at the end of the day, I can't blame them too much for some things because to us, it's a game. To them, it's uh, their job. So, you know, we're, we're customers, but to them, we're, uh, you know, we're, we're we are, <laughs> we're, we're the ones that basically uh, make them money. So... You know, they can't make money on this game if nobody spends money on it. So I'm sure they're thinking about ways to to do that because obviously they don't want to lose their uh, their income. So that all makes sense from a business standpoint. But um, I just hate to see how 
a lot of the offers that that are in this game are just crazy high. Like I I I don't mind spending a little money here and there, and most of the deals that I have spent money on are like the small flash offers where it's like five bucks here or there, and you get some gems, you get um, maybe some vault keys, you know, because vault keys are they can give you major orbs of ascension or some kind of major orbs which are pretty valuable. So it's stuff like that that I don't really mind spending money on, but you know there are some of these offers in uh, in Gems of War that are just like insanely high, like fifty bucks here and fifty bucks there. When you consider like other games, you can buy, um, you can buy like a brand new game for PS4 or Xbox for like sixty bucks, which uh, you could you could buy one Mythic card in this game for like fifty. Uh, and you're not even guaranteed that it's going to be a certain mythic. It's going to be a random one. So you could get Grand Guitar or some uh, really crappy mythic for 50 bucks. And I just don't feel like that's a fair <laughs> that's a fair deal. I don't I don't feel like it is. So um, <laughs> I don't I don't know why I'm talking about all this. I guess it's just because you know I I feel like uh, you know I, I I enjoy a lot of other games as well. Uh, besides just Gems of War, even though that everybody here on this this channel pretty much knows me for uh, just Gems of War, which, you know, that's fine. I, I really do appreciate all of my subscribers and everybody here that, that uh, you know, plays Gems of War like I do. And no doubt it's a fun game, oh, for sure. Um, but there's a certain part of it that's so repetitive and you can get burned out on this game is basically what I'm saying and I uh, I still want to create Gems of War content um, for the foreseeable future until this game goes under but uh, you know to keep myself from burning out on this game I feel like I'm with the little time that I do have to spend on gaming and recording uh, I I think once I uh, I complete the quest lines and maybe we get that one troop or some good troop down there in the underworld. I think at that point I'm going to uh, stop the new account playthrough, just focus on some videos for uh, my main account and then we'll I'll uh, start doing some playthroughs and things with a few other games just so I don't get burned out on uh, Gems of War. Because, I mean, I have already felt a little burnout on Gems of War in the recent past. Uh, there, there was a couple of weeks where, not in the past month, but uh, probably within uh, past six months or so, there was, <laughs> there was a couple of weeks where all I did was just log in, do my dungeons, log out, and uh, I just had to, you know. It's just one of those things where, you know... You can only you can only do the same thing every day for so long until you get bored of it. So anyway, that's just my thoughts on some of those things and uh I really have to do, I do have to, uh, you know, acknowledge the developers in some sense because, you know, for a game to hook me in for two years like this, I mean, that's, that's a feat. Even though I don't agree with their pricing schemes about how expensive things are, um, you know, it's still a fun game, challenging, but I, I do wish that they would, um, do something with arena and treasure maps you know I mean no no world is perfect so but I, I just feel like once you reach a certain level arena and uh, treasure maps have no meaning anymore I can't tell you the last time I actually did treasure maps Eh, 
Yeah, Sir Quentin Hadley's working okay. I mean, certainly, uh, I wouldn't say it's probably, I don't know if it's working better than Behemoth. That's uh, to be seen here. I don't know. Um, we might, for the next kingdom, use Behemoth and just see um, if it feels like it's doing a better job. Because the, the magic damage on Hadley is not that much at all. And it's only doing it to two enemies. However, you get the chance of that uh, skull damage. So there's that. But it doesn't really work as great for uh, these troops that have skull damage reduction. Oh, he's getting a billion extra turns, too. That's the other thing. Okay, so I, I guess the, this is not only just a new account playthrough, but it's kind of like a few of my thoughts on <laughs> things that uh, bother me about this, this game a little bit. Um, that's one of the things that really has annoyed me for a long time with Gems of War is their extra turn system. So every single time you get a four match or more, you get an extra turn. Now, I don't think I have a problem with that system if it had a limit to it. But in my experience, it doesn't feel like it has a limit to it. It feels like, you know, you just, the AI, the AI can sometimes tell where there is extra turns better than your human eye. And a lot of times it's just extra turn, extra turn, extra turn. Like with goblins, for example, I mean, they have an extra turn in their card, and then a lot of them, like King Gobtraff, will actually create extra gems, which allows you to get even more extra turn. So, in my opinion, that is not great design. I think that the extra turns should be limited. Um, I believe you should have only so many four or five matches, like, so let's say... Uh, maximum of three, four, or five matches of extra turns, and then that's it. You can't have more extra turns than that. Same thing goes for the AI. That way you don't feel like um, a spectator. Because, you know, a game is all about um, interacting with the medium. That's Games are all about that, right? So... One of the reasons why I hate mobile games is because most mobile games want to take away that personal interaction that you have with the medium, and they want to, there's all these like idle clickers, uh, idle, uh, you just basically let the, uh, the AI do everything for you instead of actually controlling your characters and, uh, you know, doing the battles yourself. It's all like this automatic crap, and to me, that's not a game, like, that's you might as well just watch a movie or something if you want to sit back and just watch things happen without you interacting with it the reason i'm going to play a game is because i want to interact with it i want to be the one controlling what's going on on the screen so i feel like mobile games are ruining that aspect of gaming in my opinion like it's making us super lazy when it comes to games games are all about putting in your best effort to uh, understand the game and then beat it the feeling of winning <laughs> in a game like if, if it's just like this idle clicker like what's the <laughs> what's the point you know I don't know I mean it's just not for me I guess uh, I know a lot of people probably really really enjoy those games but if I'm not the one playing the game and it's just my phone playing the game for me like that's that's really really boring to me doesn't even feel like I'm playing a game at that point so um, you know Gems of War doesn't feel completely like that but there are aspects of it where uh, human control is taken away for example uh, PvP is uh, what that means is that it is uh, player versus player but that isn't exactly true is it because uh, yeah we're gonna need to unlock the thief class here 
So that isn't exactly true because there's no real player on the other end when you're doing PvP battles. What's happening is uh, a real person selects the team and then the computer is going to control that team uh, to fight against you. So you're still fighting against the computer, it's just a real person picked those cards, troops and weapon and all that in order to... Uh, for the computer to use against you so it still kind of feels cheap Because uh, you're not actually playing against a real person in real time. So to call it PvP is kind of like I mean it is but it isn't and I think that's one of the the really boring things about PvP is that again it just feels like it's automatic and everybody just picks uh, the the hardest troops to defeat and you know they the classes weapons life and death orb weaver zulgoth i mean they just throw all that stuff in there as their defense team and then you end up fighting the same exact copy team uh almost every other battle every time you do pvp so it's stuff like that that just like really is like why am i even playing pvp if uh i have to deal with that nonsense so i don't know I guess this this video, I guess this video is a little bit of like my my criticism of uh, aspects of Gems of War, but it's all in good fun. Like I don't get me wrong, I wouldn't be uh, creating this much content for uh, Gems of War if I didn't like playing the game. I do like playing the game. There's just certain parts of it that feel a little a little too mobile gamey for me. And uh, that's the part I don't like. So if they move more and more in that direction of, you know, you have to pay for more things to keep playing. Um, if there's a lot of, like, if they start putting in ways where you can just basically have the computer just play for you. And instead of you actually controlling things. Uh, I will definitely uh, leave Gems of War if that happens before they shut down um, just because that's that's not a type of game that I enjoy but one of the things that I really do like about Gems of War is like the variety of troops now one could say uh, that, that it's bloated and I would agree with that to some extent because they release a new troop every single week they release new legendaries new mythics almost every month so, you know, if you're not keeping up with all those, you can get behind really quickly um, and miss out on all those, you know, legendary troops and all that kind of stuff. So, um, it's one of those, those tricky things where you're like, well, if I don't keep playing, then I'm going to get way behind. So, like, that's, that's the hard part, too, because if you do get burned out on the game and you do leave it for a couple of months, you don't do anything. Uh, you're going to miss out on new troops and all that. But as far as it being bloated, I would say that we, we do have a situation now, uh, definitely now more than like last year, just because they've added so many new troops and weapons and uh, all of that stuff, that uh, there is a little bit of a bloat uh, to... Uh, and what I mean by that is that there's a lot of troops that are just kind of useless, that you're never going to use, but they're there. So anyway, we just unlocked the Thief class. So let me go and take a look at that. I can uh, give you guys my honest, my brutally honest opinion about the Thief class. You guys ready for it? My brutally honest uh, opinion of the Thief class is that it's awesome. <laughs> like uh, Thief class is one of my favorite uh, classes in the game. It's traits. It does start with 50% mana if you do uh, trait the second one here. The third one is pretty good. It'll deal seven, seven damage to the last enemy on four or five matches. So if you're using it with a storm or with some kind of troll or troop that can uh, get a lot of four or five matches for you, that can do some pretty good damage there. So traits are awesome. Uh, as for the talents, there's some pretty good talents in here too. Hunter's Mark on 4 or 5 match, uh, that's pretty good. Gain Armor, um, 
and uh, light fingers is always good especially since this is a gold uh, class with the uh, skeleton key and we'll get to that this here backup is really good 35 percent chance uh, for bandit uh, ally to, to uh, get summoned stealthy is really good dodge 30 percent chance to dodge skull damage and then you have rising shadows seven percent chance to assassinate the last enemy when another enemy dies and i have had that trigger on me when i'm using the skeleton key so this is one of those classes that i would recommend leveling up to max level 100 fully trade it uh as for its weapon skeleton key is one of the best uh uh, weapons in the game uh, you do need Cedric though and uh, greed or leprechaun and egg thief and then this weapon skeleton key that combination is still great they haven't nerfed it ever since uh, this weapon came out which I'm really glad they didn't because uh, it is still really fun to use 250 wins with this class equ equipped and you will get this weapon uh, you do have to check your mail though because it'll show up there uh, and you would do at the claim it as reward in your mailbox and then you will have it now uh, So as far as my talent tree for this I would go hunt and Then I would probably just go uh, knife throwing Something like that five doesn't really matter 10 light fingers 20 is backup 40 is stealthy 70 would be dodge and then le level 100 rising shadows that right there would be my build with this class. Um, yeah, really great cra class. Skeleton Key, one of the best weapons in the game. So great, great, great. Uh, once you get this far, I would recommend, uh, you know, Titan class is probably number one to level up so you can get rock solid with it because that's going to help you with a lot of different events. Once you get at least over 40 with Titan, then you might want to level up the Thief class. So that's it for that. Uh, let's head over to Gulvania. Uh, we're going to go ahead here uh, and do the Gulvania quest line. We're going to try to do two of these quest lines in a row. Um, and I think here I'm going to edit this team. We're going to throw Behemoth back in here just because uh, we're going to see what it does in comparison. If I feel like the battles are going slower or faster than uh, Quentin Hadley. And with any kind of gold team like this, you just want you want to make sure you're going to get as much gold up there as possible. Right now, we got 64 out of 200. So my leprechaun, I'm going to cast that as much as I can here until we get close to that. We do want to do some damage there, but now instead of casting my uh, my bronze lock pistol, we can go ahead and cast leprechaun just to add more of that gold. Excuse me. Um, but yeah. Um, Overall, this is a great, uh, great team. Behemoth works for it too, even though there is some mana blocking, but it does work. The computer missed a four match. That's one of the things I've actually realized in this new account playthrough is that the AI seems to miss a lot more uh, four or five matches at a lower level like this. Like at, at a high level, I'm, I barely ever see the AI miss an extra turn on those four or five matches. Like that's, I, there must be some kind of scaling where the AI is like, hey, let's take it easier on this player because they're a low level. And then once you're like over level 1000, they're like, ah, who cares? We'll just go completely bionic on this player. And they take, and the computer just does extra turn for like 20 turns in a row. <laughs> uh yeah so we'll cast leprechaun here again and we'll do that so yeah i don't know behemoth is still pretty good i might keep him in there for now it's still pretty good even though it's mana blocked it's still getting enough mana because once bronze lock pistol fills up and then you can uh explode the board with leprechaun a lot of that mana goes right to uh, 
behemoth. So it's not it's not horrible. Nice extra match there. We'll do that. We'll do that. Trying to blast through this quest line really quick. I believe this is episode 25. I should <laughs> I should have looked at my uh, my playlist, I guess, before I said that at the beginning of this video. I'm pretty sure it's episode 25. I don't know why I just thought of that now, but I was like, uh, I probably should have double-checked that. That's okay. Uh, we can correct it in the title if I'm wrong. Yeah, it is important to get through the quest lines. Uh, that's one of the most important things that you can do as an early level player because you will get, uh, you need to unlock all those kingdoms uh, so you can unlock classes and also you will be able to begin to power up those kingdoms. Um, and that's very important because the higher power level your kingdoms are, the more stats your troops are going to get. And the uh, more tribute you're going to get every hour in the game. And that's the other thing, too, uh, just to continue on that vein of, like, friendly criticism of the game mechanics is that mobile is uh, has an unfair advantage to the console versions of this game, uh, primarily because it's much easier on your, on your phone to collect your hourly tributes. You know, uh, there's a lot of jobs uh, where you can just flip out your phone and uh, collect that tribute real quick and then just power it back off. And uh, definitely do not do that if there's policies at your job uh, for being on your phone. <laughs> uh, you don't want to lose your job over a game like just Gems of War. That'd be kind of silly. But... Uh, you know, if there's some jobs out there, I'm sure they don't mind that sort of thing. Uh, it only takes like 30 seconds or less to collect your tribute. You just got to power up, touch the screen where the tribute thing is. You collect your tribute, done. You know, so that's how easy it is on your phone. And you take your phone almost everywhere with you. Whereas if you're playing on uh, PS4 or xbox one then uh you do not have the liberty of just taking that console everywhere with you like to work to uh when you're driving on the road um so that's where mobile has a huge advantage because when you're collecting tributes tributes give you glory um gems and uh good resources like that so that's where like most of my gems come from, honestly, is that on my main account, I've got over 20,000 gems. And uh, it's because uh, that account is my PC account is connected to my smartphone. So I, I can collect those tributes all day long, every hour. And then when I come home and I turn on my computer, my Steam account is connected to that mobile account. And so, you know, <clears throat> That's uh, a big advantage in my opinion. So I think uh, the developers should have thought about that and made it more fair for console players uh, to collect their tributes. I think on the console, it's fair. It would be more fair if uh, those tributes just stacked. You know, they accumulated maybe every day uh, for, let's say, a week and then after a week if you didn't collect those tributes then it would reset I think something a system like that would be very fair for people that play on console because uh, you know you might be a busy person you might not play the game every single day if you're on console <clears throat> so and you certainly can't collect your tributes every hour like I said if you've got a full-time job you're working 40 plus hours every week 
Um, or you, you, you can't, you can't drive home every hour and collect your tribute. It's stupid. So I'm just saying, uh, as friendly criticism for the developers that if they want to really make, uh, it fair for console players, they need to consider doing something like that because, uh, mobile players have a huge unfair advantage as far as that's concerned. And, uh, you know, my main account is mobile and PC, but this new account playthrough is, uh, is on the PS4. It's console. So, you know, I'm personally experiencing this of how, like, how much more difficult it is to actually save up gems here on the console than it is on, uh, the phone. It's a lot more difficult. Nice, we got a nice match there. We're gonna cast Leprechaun though, cause uh, need that gold up there for more mana generation by the pistol. Oh, wasn't expecting all that damage. Sometimes them skulls just drop and drop and you get unlucky. Sometimes it's in your favor, though. Yeah, we're, we're moving through this quest pretty quick. Uh, Golvania, I'm trying to remember what class uh, is for this kingdom. I can't remember. I think it might be Death Knight. But I, like, never use Death Knight. It's probably an okay class. It's probably not the worst, but I just personally never use it. I think I only have it at like level 26 or something like that on my main account. So, we'll see. I don't even know 100% for sure if that is what uh, what class this kingdom has. That's, uh, so, yeah. I think I got, mo <laughs> I think I got most of the criticism out of my system now. So hopefully you guys weren't too annoyed by uh, all those little things I was critiquing or criticizing on the game. It's just, uh, like I said, I do enjoy the game. There's absolutely, I mean, no one's forcing me to, uh, to play this game or log in every day to make videos for it. I've got probably like two to three hundred videos on my channel that are all Gems of War related. I've played this game for at least two years, so, you know, <laughs> if, you know, any of that criticism just comes really out of, uh, I would like the game to improve. I'd like to see it become more fun and not less fun. Um, and I know that there's grinding, you know, the, the RPG aspects of any game. If there's any kind of role-playing <clears throat> story to a game, there's probably something you have to grind for, whether it's XP, equipment, you know, loot, leveling things up, collecting things, uh... You know, there's probably something along those lines if you're playing an RPG. I generally do like games like that where you have a progression system. You feel like you're getting more powerful as you put more effort into it. And I will say that this game uh, has done pretty well um, as far as that aspect goes. Because there's a lot of games where, uh, you know, you just... You level up or you can get to max level within like a week and then you're just... You're bored... Because everything is just so weak and you're so overpowered, you're just like, okay, what's the point anymore? But Gems of War is still, uh, you know, there's still a lot of challenge all the way through up until you're, you know, past level 1000. And uh, I just wish that uh, there was something I could do to, like, put more modes in the game that were a little more fun, a little less monotonous. But, you know. It's not my game, I just enjoy playing it most of the time. Alright, 
let's see where we are in the quest here. Oh, let's, uh, we'll do one more battle here, and then we should be able to check the status where we are in the quest line. I should be getting pretty close, I would think. Yeah, I mean, this, this team is really, really good. I got lucky and got Behemoth uh, pretty early on. I do like it as a legendary troop. I mean, later on, I don't use it much. Like, on my main account, I barely ever use it anymore. But, okay, so we got, we got like four segments of battles here left. And uh, then we'll have to do the class. So this is going to go over a little bit over uh, an hour. I wanted to keep it about an hour, but now that I'm into this second quest here, I'm not going to just <laughs> just end it here. We're going to finish this second quest. And uh, and then we will... Uh, finish this episode and then we'll go on to another episode probably because I have some time here tonight to do it but yeah so uh I don't think I completely f finished my uh, thoughts on uh, how long the game is going to last. I remember uh, mentioning that earlier on, and then I went off on some kind of other issue. But uh, just to mention that really quickly, I think that the game has another few years at least if they don't do too much to uh, make it pay to win. I mean, there's always going to be somebody out there that's willing to pay money to get ahead in a video game. Which, you know, it's, uh, if you want to spend money on getting ahead in a video game, that's it's totally up to you. But most of the time, I, will, I do not recommend doing that. I don't mind paying for the video game itself. Um, no, I know this might... <laughs> You know, this might seem a little bit uh, weird since I have paid money on this game. But it's a free-to-play game, so it's one of those things where if I... I kind of have this... Um, this measurement that I go by, which is... Uh, if, if I'm paying any more than a dollar per hour of entertainment, then uh, it's probably not not worth my time. And that might make it sound like I'm a real cheapo, but, um, you know, I've definitely put way more uh, time into this game. It's probably the amount of money that I've spent on this game uh, isn't that much compared to the amount of hours I've put into it. So that's how I look at it, but I'm not, I, I haven't put any money into this game in like over a year. Well, I might have bought a flash offer with some of those vault keys for like two bucks each. I think I bought one of those, uh, a couple of those uh, earlier this year. Other than that, I can't remember uh, spending money on anything. But I am up to VIP 6, so I don't know how much money that actually is. I remember in the early days, I spent some money to get some of those early packs of trait stones those were the things that really got to me because uh it was really hard to farm trait stones uh, i mean it's still kind of hard but at least now you get a guaranteed drop of an arcane trait stone in uh those mythic boss rooms for uh explore level 12 uh, but 
yeah, I was just, I don't know, really frustrated back in the day with getting those uh, trade stones to make my troops more powerful. So I did spend some money on those packs of trade stones whenever I could afford it. And, you know, looking back at it, I probably shouldn't have done that, but... I don't know. I don't have any regrets about it because I've, I've had a lot of enjoyment from this game. More so than some games that I've uh, bought for like 60 bucks brand new. And then uh, I only put maybe like 15 hours into them, just set them down, never played them again. So <laughs> when you think about it like that, like dollar per hour of entertainment. But how long I think the game is going to last, I mean, that does depend on a few things. There's new generation of consoles coming out this fall uh, if there's no delays. And uh, that could, uh, if, I don't know if uh, the company here that publishes Gems of War, if they have to renew a contract or something to get their game on uh, Xbox and PlayStation. But that could affect the game as well because you're going to have a lot of new players probably that uh, get into, uh, that buy consoles uh, this generation. And then they're going to check out the free to play section because who doesn't, you know, when you're, when you're really bored with all your other games, you go into the free to play section. You're like, you know, I don't feel like spending money on something. I just want to try a new game, something different. And then uh, so you're going to go to the free-to-play section, and you're going to check out what's in there. So, um, if this game, if Gems of War gets on the new consoles, both of them, and if uh, they continue to update the game in a way that is, uh, you know, not increasingly pay-to-win... Where it still feels like you can have fun even if you're not spending money. Then uh, I think it can last another like four, four to five years with a pretty good play, player base. Because I'm sure there's always like new people coming in to play. They get sucked into it. And like if, for example, if I found this game today and it was my first time playing it, I probably would get sucked into it just as much as I did two years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, then I'd, you know, I might play it for, you know, two years from now if uh, I was finding it today. So let's go check out, yep, Death Knight. I was correct on that. So we need to unlock the Death Knight class here really quick. And that should conclude episode 25. The next episode, uh, we'll do two more kingdoms, and I probably won't talk about uh, things about the game that I don't really like. I don't know why I got on that topic. It's just what came to my mind. Um, you know, I mean, the other part of me is like, uh, as I said earlier on in this playthrough, I don't really want to get burned out on Gems of War because I still do enjoy it. And playing two accounts simultaneously is a little bit, uh, a little bit stressful, especially, you know, with, uh, you're still trying to, uh, you know, work a, a job and have a life outside of games and YouTube. Uh, so... But it's all good. Well, we're gonna have, we're still gonna have fun with this new account playthrough up until the point where I uh, where I go on to something else. And really, that that's that's the objective for me. Like on my channel, no matter what game I'm going to play now or in the future, is I wanna I wanna bring useful information to anyone who's watching my videos, uh, or just be simply. Uh, entertaining you know and I don't know if I'm that entertaining of a person but um, you know I think sometimes people just want to watch somebody else play something sit back and just you know I mean I, I, I know I've done that like quite a bit instead of like watching a movie or Netflix or something like that sometimes I'll just get something to eat 
sit at the computer and just like watch uh, gameplay. Somebody else is playing a game I've never played before. Uh, and sometimes that's actually what sells me on a game. It's not so much like the trailers, because trailers are so deceiving these days. Like, um, I don't know how many of you know about uh, this game called No Man's Sky. came out back in 2016. I was pretty hyped for the game, because uh, I'm into space and aliens and space exploration and all that kind of stuff. I always thought that stuff was cool as a kid. Um, but No Man's Sky, I was really excited for it. Trailers were super deceiving. Um, and there was a lot of stuff that just wasn't in the game that basically the trailer was showing off. Um, and that was super, uh, upsetting to me. And I just, I've noticed a trend in the last, um, in the last decade at least of all of these big gaming companies. Not only are they, you know, just all the microtransactions have been bothering me in these these games and all that kind of stuff and but the trailers are really really deceiving for like almost every game so i try to avoid trailers and what i do is i just watch somebody else play the game when it comes out that's even like better to me than a review because like i'm i'm actually seeing uh, not cut footage or cut gameplay. I'm just watching the raw gameplay. This guy starts the game from the beginning and just plays through it like any person would. And that gives you a really great idea of what the game's about, if you would like it. Um, so, uh, you know, that's that's just, you know, I like, I like games. So I like uh, watching other people play games I've never played before. So that's all fun. Let's go check out the Death Knight class. My brutally honest opinion. It's way worse than the Thief class. Uh, it's uh, but it's not. It's not a horrible. Uh, it's not the worst ever class, but. So traits, I do not like any of the traits really. Death mark is not that great. Uh, death mark, all enemies when you die. The talent tree uh, does have a couple of things here that are pretty good. Uh, has a couple of storms here that you can start from the bat beginning of the battle, which is always good if you want to explode the board right away. Has razor armor, add 20% of armor to skull damage, vanguard, gain barrier at the start of battle. Um, it does have Banishment, which Banishment is one of uh, the really great talents that you can have, as well as Lightning Strike. Uh, Lightning Strike is a great mana generating talent, so whenever I see that in a class, I usually pick that. So, but other than Lightning Strike, Banishment, um, you know, other than those, I really don't care for any of the talents in this tree. Uh, so, yeah, not... Uh, not super impressive. Uh, Crypt Keeper. Death mark an enemy. Deal true damage to all enemies below them. Boosted by enemy death marks. So it's basically going to do true damage to the bottom three enemies if you select the top enemy. So it will not do true damage to every enemy. Only three maximum. So it's kind of a weird weapon, but it's not uh, the worst thing you can get either. So, my my brutally honest opinion, it's meh. It's not not amazing. So there you go, guys. That is the uh, Zijin Kingdom, the Galvania Kingdom. There are two classes, and this is episode twenty-five. And uh, thanks you guys for watching and putting up with <laughs> with all of my uh, opinions about the game there. Uh, hopefully, you know, the next episode, I won't be talking about too much of all that stuff. We'll just talk more about things with the game, uh, troops and whatnot. So that's the end of the episode here. I will see you guys in the next one. Later.